Morning, love. You want eyes? Mm. Fine, thanks. Did you sleep all right? Yeah, yeah. Went out like a light. Well, worn out, wasn't I? <laughs> so, how long have you been awake? I don't know. Half an hour or something. I've been doing some thinking. What about? Well, you know, about last night. Us. What it meant. Oh, right. Well, what you reckon? About us. Yeah. Are you going to stay? Are we going to make a go of it? Well, seeing as I haven't had any better offers, why not, eh? I always knew in my heart you'd be back. I'll tell you what, I'll make a nice big breakfast and we'll have it together, eh? Well, if you'd are stopping, then you can get up and make me a nice big brekkie. Uh-oh, house rule number one. I'm not your skivvy, so if you want some brekkie, mm. you know what to do. Oh, way! <laughs> Fancy a copper? Oh, what time is it? Just gone eight. Where's Thomas? Oh, he's uh, having his breakfast. He's fine. Oh, Mike should have woke me. I've got a ton of things to do. Hey, I'm back now. With me bronzy and me marigolds. So you stay in bed. I'm a lion. <laughs> Sorry. Mm, lion, eh? Who are you kidding? <laughs> Thanks, love. All right, son. Uh, I didn't wake you, did I? Why? I came in your room early. I didn't have any clean socks. Oh, right, no, we were the sound of sizzling sausages. I'll do <laughs> you some breakfast in a minute. Nice one. Oh, Carlo. Michael, will you use a glass. Mm -hmm. So, what's a special occasion then? Hey? We've well, got the full works there. Not me not around the shop, you're usually open by now. Well, it's only an hour or so, isn't it? And anyway, wanted to enjoy me breakfast. What's wrong with him? Sitting here when he could be making money. He'd normally be choking on that by now. Well, I suppose it's sort of a celebration. Mm. What is it? Have you won the pools or something? <laughs> Me and your mother. What, you've both won the pools? Don't be stupid, Michael. We don't even do the pools. Well, what is it then? Well, if you just give me a chance. All right. Well, the fact is, I... Well, what I mean is both of us. Me and your mum, like... We've... Well, we've decided that I should stay <laughs> here. Well, forever. Permanently. Yeah. Permanent. We're going to make a go of it, Michael. Living together properly. Your mum and dad back together again. Nice one. A made up for you. Yeah, so me and your dad. Right then. How much dirty washing is in your room? Oh, loads. Oh, I am surprised. <laughs> What about our Josh? What about him? Well, he's still your son, isn't he? Is he going to come here and live with us? Or is he going to stay with that mother of his? One step at a time, eh, son? Look, let's just forget about Bev and Josh for the time being, eh? Anyway, they're off on the rolls. We don't even know if they will come back. So let's just worry about ourselves, eh? Right, that's Thomas away to school. Heaven for Grandad's, eh? And Grandma's. Josh is with his today, spoiling him rotten after his holiday. <laughs> What's all with they? Max having chilli for breakfast. Oh, no. It's for tonight. I was up with the baby at half past five, so I thought, well, why not? I'll only have to do it later, and I've got a thousand and one other things to do. Leave that. I'll do it. Um, oh, right, I'll get the clothes hung out. You can leave that and all. Go on, put your feet up. Make me feel dizzy. Bev, I've got a list of things to do about a mile long. Oh, that's the health visitor. I'll get it. You sit down. All right, love. Pass in. Just want to have a word about little Tomo, you know. Well, you better come in, then. Cheers, kid. Pat, you've got a visitor. All right, love. Oh, hello. Just passing. Thought I'd call in, see how the little fella's doing, you know. Oh, Thomas is fine, thanks. Yeah, no harm done. Sound, yeah. Glad to hear it. Lucky I recognised him, eh? Could have been very nasty, that. 
Yeah, very lucky. Uh, Thomas went missing on Friday. He um, sort of ran away. Oh, God. But unfortunately, um, Mr. Corkill here found him, very kindly brought him home. No sweat, Trish. Mind you, lucky it was me that found him, and not some stranger, eh? All sorts of weirdos hanging around these days, isn't there? I didn't say that again. Hey, yours will be growing up soon, running about the place, won't he, eh? Grow up quick these days. Need an eye keeping on a mind, Trish. You know what kids are like, eh? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Right, yeah. Anyway, just thought I'd pop in, you know. Make sure he was all right and that like. And please, Pat, don't go embarrassing me, you know. Give me anything, like a reward or anything, you know. Thanks again. Max and I are very grateful. Grateful? Oh, right, yeah, because, um, you know, when I brought Tom home, I had to uh, get a cab, you know, taxi-like. Well, I didn't want to be taking a little kid of his age on the bus with all sorts of scallies. No, know of what course I mean? not. How much was it? Uh, we'll just say a tenner, shall we, eh? A tenner? What'd you find in Manchester? Acne cab, wasn't it? Oh, oh, nice one, Trish, thanks. Hey, say hello to the little man for me, will you, eh? I'll see myself out. OK. Thanks again. God, he makes my flesh creep. Well, he's not exactly mine and Max's favourite person either. But at least he had the decency to bring Thomas back. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I don't know. Hey, so what happened then? I mean, why did Thomas run off? I lost my temper and I shouted at him. I mean, he was only after some attention, but, you know, I was busy. They found him wandering in a park. Oh, I dread to think what could have happened. I know it must have shaken you up, but don't go blaming yourself. Must have had your hands full with this one. Yeah, well, it wasn't just Alice. Um, I've started working again. You're what? Yeah, I'm doing the PR for the restaurant. I mean, it's only part-time, nothing specially big. So that's why you were cooking chilli at half five in the morning? Yeah, just like Max. You think I'm crazy, don't you? You're not mad. I know what it's like, stuck on your toad with a kid. Drives you mad. I mean, why do you think I started cleaning again? As much as we love our kids, we all need to escape, get our teeth into something. So you don't think I'm a bad mother, then? You bad. One couldn't wish for a better mum. And, well, if working again makes you feel better, stick with it. You all right there? Oh, God. Will you give me the phrase of my life, son? Oh, I'm sorry about that, love. I didn't mean to start you. It's just that you looked a bit lost, you know. I'm trying to see if my boss is in. You should have opened up by now. Oh, you work here, do you? Yeah. Not quite Alex, is it? Hey, next door but one is not exactly the Ritz, but beggars can't be choosers, eh? Greg Stolter. Just started at the pizza parlour working for me. Oh, oh Jackie Corkill. I've been slaving away in this place for years. Years? You don't even look old enough. Did you start here straight from school? Oh, you're a quick worker, aren't you? Well, I'm just being friendly, love, you know. Well, we are going to be neighbours now, aren't we? Everything OK? Oh, Jimmy. All right, love. Sound, yeah? Who's this? All right, mate. Greg Salter. Um. This is Jimmy. Her husband. Well, uh, you're one very lucky fella then, aren't you? Greg's working for making the pizza parlour. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you'll be seeing me around the place, you know. Dad? All right, son. I'll see you later. Sure, love. What's his game? You are. <laughs> he was just being friendly, that's all. Friendly? He was all over you. Jimmy. I'm very flattered by this show of jealousy, but he was just saying hello. Yeah, we'll just make sure that that's all he does, Dick. I'll see you later. Hey, where are you going? Just had a bit of business to attend to. What business? Just something for Barry, OK? Jimmy, you're not. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm clean, aren't I? I'm a changed man. I even saved that barn and kept from being run over, didn't I? What else have I got to do to prove it? All right, all right. I'm sorry. Didn't know you had a new delivery boy there, Mick. You what? Laughing lad in there. He's oh, great. Fancies himself, doesn't he, eh? Bit of a jack the lad, is he? Yeah, well, you want to watch him with your Marianne, I'm telling you. Hey, just do me a favour, Jimmy. Keep that out of my business, will you? Only offering a bit of friendly advice, Mick. You know, just doing you a favour, that's all. Since when have you started doing people favours, Jimmy? Well, maybe you should have a word with Max and Pat Fan about that. About me saving their Thomas from going under the bus. You what? Yeah, that's right. Seconds away from death he was, the poor kid. Only I jumped in and saved him, you know. I've had Mersey Mars on the phone and everything. They want to interview me. 
local hero or something. I told him I'd think about it. See you later. What was all that about? I don't know. He's off his head or something. Hey, Mac, guess what? That's taking me into town. Sound, eh? Oh, right. Yeah, well, I got a few bob spare, you know. I thought I'd treat him now that I'm working like. Oh, nice one. Hey, and don't worry, I'll be back for my shift, yeah? Uh, well, make sure you are, because we're going to go see our solicitor today. Sign some more money away in our house, aren't we? Hey, you don't want to miss that then, do you? We'll see you later. Yeah, see you later. Have a nice time. I thought he was supposed to be broke. Like you said, he's working. And it doesn't cost much for a couple of bus fares to town. Probably just going to walk around, look at stuff, you know? OK, so I look forward to seeing you this afternoon, then, Mr. Hall. Yeah, OK, right. Look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye. Right, that's that one. No, where was I? Are you slow down. Oh, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm on top of everything before Madam wakes up again. So you haven't told me about your holiday in Greece yet. You haven't given me a chance, have you? You're up and down like a jack-in-the-box. <laughs> right. I'm all ears. Well, not much to say, really. It's very quiet. What, no holiday romance? What, with some spotty 18-year-old who can't hold his ale? The place was full of kids. You mean people your age? All right, so like me fella's a bit older. So, um, have you heard how Ron is? Ron? Um, no, should I have? No, I just thought you might have seen him around. No, no, I think I'm a bit tied up here, I'm afraid. I think I'm dead soft, you know, but I've really missed him. I couldn't stop thinking about him. What, even though you were surrounded by all those bronzed muscles on the beach? Spotty backs and beer bellies, you mean? Probably why I couldn't stop thinking about her on. Oh, hi, come in. Haven't called round a bad time, have I? No, Bev and I were just having a chat. Oh, right. Hi, Barry. How's Penny? She's fine, thanks. So, you two are still sharing, eh? I'll we'll have to pop round, see you later for a chat. Yeah, she'll be out, I think. Oh, I'll try her anyway. So, how's the PR going? Good, see what you think it is. A time capsule? Yeah, it's a good way of getting cheap publicity for the restaurant. You just get a few local celebrities and a few of the larger local companies, oh, and the football clubs, to donate some memorabilia. Then you bury it all in a time capsule in the foundations. I should be able to get the local press involved, no problem. Sound? Well, I've already been on to Liverpool Football Club and their PR man's coming to see me this afternoon. Um, Brian Hall. Van Hall. You? Yeah. Well, he used to play for Liverpool in the 70s, didn't he? He went to university, so that was his nickname. You know, Bamba Gasco and University Challenge. Oh, I see. Got his autograph when I was a kid. Anyway, look, I've uh, got to go and find Jimmy, but how about if I uh, come back a bit later, hung around a bit, then you could introduce me to Brian? I mean, uh, I should be introduced to him, shouldn't I? With me being the owner of the restaurant. <laughs> All right, boys. All right. Here, enjoy yourselves. Feel the gap. Well, I would be if I could find that blade to her husband of yours. He's gone off with the cellar keys. Do you know where he is? Yeah, well, I thought he was with you. I'm not that old chestnut. Tell him I'm looking for him, will you? Yeah, sure, true. I know what you're thinking, Ron. A leper can't change his spots. Yeah, well, you said it, Jackie. Yeah, well, he has changed. That spell inside. Jackie, I don't want to hear it, OK? Now, you just make sure that Jimmy stays away from me and my family, and that'll do for me. So you're all set for Friday? Yeah, yeah. I hope I haven't lost my touch, like. It's been ages since I knocked up a pizza. Ah, it's like riding a bike. Anyway, you'll have Greg to help you out, and he's sound. I can't go upsetting your sister like that. You give her nightmares. What's he been up to now? Nothing. Hey, hang on a minute, son. He's been frightening Gemma. I haven't. You have. Telling her there's a bogey man in the woods. What are you doing that for, son? Frightening the life out of our Gemma? I was only messing. We told we messed around like that. She's still only a baby. You're supposed to be grown up. Sorry, Dad. All right. <coughs> All right, mate. We're not late, are we? No, we're not going out just yet. Hey, look, this is Mike. He'll be running the place while I'm away. He's worked it before, so he knows the score. 
Greg Salter. Look forward to working with you, mate. Yeah, nice one. Hey, listen, Mick, I better shoot off. I'll see you Friday. Yeah, see you, Mike. Yeah, hey, nice meeting you. See you Friday. You two look like you've been busy. What? Oh, yeah, we got a bit carried away with the shopping, didn't we, son? Should you all my new gear, Mick? It's a cracker. Yeah, it all looks very, um, expensive. Yeah, well, I had a run of luck on the horses, didn't I? And if you can't treat your own son... Hey, Dan, can I get a new top? Oh, that's all I need. Look, I'm sorry, son, you know the score. Look, what do you go outside and kick your ball around there? Oh, Dad. Oh, Dad, nothing. Now, go on. You know I don't like you know while I'm working. Er, uh, is it all right if me and my dad go upstairs? Want to try my new on? Let him see them. Yeah, go on, help yourself. Tell me. Ah, no sweat. Designer labels, eh? That stuff must have cost a fortune. Yeah, certainly more than I can afford. Must have had a good day on the night, eh? Come off it, Mick. He probably doesn't even bet. Hey, Leo, don't go too far, no. Well, how's it going on back here, then? Well, how do you think? He's nipped it. Hey, Mick, uh, I'm sorry. I forgot to give you these. What are they? Well, just some receipts I got for our Gary's gear. You know, I'm useless. I'm always losing them. Just want you to hang on to them, like, in case he needs to take anything back, like, you know. Yeah, sure. Great. Disturbing you, am I? No, not at all. I was just uh, jotting down a few ideas for the restaurant. Oh, not you at all. Sorry? I've just left your part next door. She's been at it all afternoon. You know, this time capsule thing. I don't know how she does it, you know. I mean, as if she hasn't got enough on her plate. Typical of fellas, though, isn't it? Leaving us to do all the work. Be lost without us. <laughs> Quite. Hey, so this is the new pad then, eh, Pen? Very trendy. Furniture must have cost you a mint. Yes, I believe it did. It's like something out of those posh magazines, isn't it? Oh, my God. What's going on in here? World War Three? Something like that. And if Barry thinks I'm going to clear up that mess, he's got another thing coming. Cheek of a fella, eh? <laughs> There's all this stuff for Jackie as well. Yeah, your mother dug it all at the garage for her. We're dropping it round there in a minute. All these food parcels. You'd be picking a Red Cross on the side of the Moby next. Well, I can't have my own daughter going hungry, can I? I think I'll slip at a few bob as well to help out. Oh, it's all right for some, isn't it? Hey, come on, Michael. You do well enough out of me. So, uh, is it all right to get some batteries from the shop, then? Well, more flame than batteries. You let me out of business at this race. I need them for me overdrive pedal for me guitar. Look, Dad, you know I want to pay for them, but with me not having a job in that. Yeah, I know, son. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, it's all right. I don't know. All that hard work to get letters after your name, you finish up making pizzas in that place. And to think that I helped vote this lot into power. Yeah, go on. Go and get yourself some batteries. Nice one, Dad. I'll see you later. And uh, say hello to Jackie for us. Yeah. Hi, love. Hiya, Jack. I do got some powdered milk here, Jackie, two parcels. Ah, oh, thanks, love. Listen, about before. Forget it. Let's not fall out, eh? No. No chance of that. Hey, Ron, uh, you haven't seen Arlie knocking a boat, have you? I haven't, mate. Sorry. How about you, Jackie? No, mate. I've been in the shop all afternoon. He's probably around the back. I'll go and look around there. Are you ready to go? Uh, yeah, give us two ticks, love. Just get this lot loaded. Okay. I'll lock up. Right. Just like old times, eh? Hey? You and Dee Dee are five together. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seems to be getting on very well. Yeah, we are. Very well. See, Jack, me and Dee Dee were, uh, we're back together again. You know, properly. As man and wife. For better or worse. Kelly! Hi. Hey, guess what? What? I've just met Brian Hall. Who? Brian Hall. He used to play for Liverpool. He's going to give us Amazon publicity for the restaurant. Oh, right. So what about you? You've been busy? Busy relaxing. Not all right for some, eh? What about the kitchen? Is it still a mess? Hey, nice one, Pen. See, it wasn't that much of a pain, was it? I bet you'd even enjoyed it. Every minute of it. See, if we both pull our weight, this is going to be a doddle. You can get on doing your bit here, and I'll run the restaurant business. Me and you're going to get on like house on fire. Right, Pen. That's the bathroom done. I'll finish for the day. I've got to get off. Have you met our new cleaner? There's no sign of him down there. Where could he have got to? I don't know. He knows not to go off the parade. Any sign of him? No, I'm nothing. Should we phone the busy, Smith? No, I'll give it a few more minutes. He can't have gone far. All right, kids. Um, 
Excuse me, you wouldn't happen to have seen Leo, would you? Who, me? No, why? Well, he went off playing footy and he's disappeared. Thought you might have seen him, that's all. Oh, right. Oh, well, listen, if you need a bit of expert help, I'm your man, you know. Well, I did find the Farnham kid, didn't I? Uh, right, look, tired, Jimmy, but we'll have another look around the place. Mick, no problem. Listen, sniff a cork, he'll here, I'll find him for you. It's all right, Mick, there's really no need. Mick, I insist. Hey, Mick, there he is. Oh, thank goodness for that. Leo, get over here now. What's he playing at? Hey, Mick, you know what kids are like, sense of adventure and all that. We were always knocking around the woods when we were kids, us. Anyway, if you ever need an hand with him, you know where to find me, eh? Where have you been? Nowhere. Nowhere? We've been out of our minds with worry. Just playing in the woods. How many times have I told you to stay out of those woods? Hey. I don't want you going in there again. Don't make myself clear. See ya. Thanks, John. You shouldn't be sneaking off on Barry's time. He's been in here looking for him. <sighs> don't be worrying about Granty. I'll catch up with him later on. Here. I wanted to give you this. Ten pounds? Yeah, treat yourself. Get your hair done or something. What's on? What's going to you? Well, it's the least I could do, isn't it? All the money I wasted on that filth. <sighs> Every spare penny I've got now goes on you, here. Oh, Jimmy, there's no need to do that. There's every need to do that. So I won't hear another word, OK? Anyway, I got it off. What's it? Pat Farnham. You are? I told that I had to get a taxi to get there. Tom, I won't. Oh, Jimmy. Well, they can afford it, can't they? The minted snobby gets. Oh, hi, love. Hello. Hi, oh, Trish. How's uh, little Tomo? Oh, he's fine, thanks. Right. No, oh, that's nice, isn't it, eh? Getting him some fancies. Make up for losing him the other day. And you better go and see Barry. Hey, me? Yeah, you. Oh, yeah, all right. See you, Trish. Hey, uh, hope Tommy enjoys his cake. Thanks. It's it, like, eh? Is that the lot, love? Yeah, thanks. Pat. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Oh, Bev, did you have a good holiday? You look great. Not bad, thanks. Um, is he around? Ron? Uh, no, he's just gone out. Oh, so I've missed him then. Oh, never mind. I'll catch him tomorrow. I need to speak to him. Uh, listen, love, I, I know it's none of my business, but I thought you and Ron were finished. Well, we were, but, well, it was so boring on holiday. I had loads of time to think, and I've come to a decision. I want him back, and I know he wants me, so I'm going to get him. See you now. Oh, no. So I take it you haven't told her about Ron moving back in with Dee Dee? No, and I don't think I want to be there when she finds out. Oh, cheers, man. I'm spitting feathers. Are you sure you're up to this, you know, with your back? Hey, I'm over all that now. I'm fit as a fiddle. Well, if you say so. All right, love. Hi. Back to university. Yep, first day back. I'm actually looking forward to it. Oh, good. So, will you see Chris today? <sighs> I doubt it. She sent me this, congratulating me on passing my reset. She's in California. Oh, why? What's she doing there? She's got herself a new job, some sort of research post. Right, well, 
Well, maybe it's for the best, eh? Might have been a bit awkward otherwise. Yeah, I suppose so. Anyway, I better get going. First day back can only mean one thing. Oh, why? What's that? A big, fat, juicy grant check. All oh, right, so you get to pick up your money today, then, eh? Well, most of it's going to go straight to my bank manager. I'm not going to have much left after I pay my overdraft off. You still offer a few bevies, eh? Yeah, well, maybe just a few. <laughs> anyway, I better get going. See ya. Ta -ra. Bye, Mum. Bye, love. Well, it's nice to see somebody's taking a bit of pride in the garden. Have you seen the state of Granty's place over there? Wouldn't surprise me if there wasn't a couple of Japanese snipers in there. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Oh, nice day for a spot of gardening, eh? You are. You know, getting the old lawnmower out like. I haven't got a lawnmower. Oh, I see. That explains it then, eh? Explains what? The state of your front garden. Was that bacteria I saw in there before? Very funny. It's only the size of a postage stamp. Anyway, look at the state of yours. And since when did you start calling the shots around here? Hey, hey, it's not just me, Barry. All the neighbours are talking about it. And you wouldn't want Major Crosby's resident committee on your back now, would you? Yeah, well, it could do with a bit of a tidy up, like. I'm sure it don't take a couple of hours. It is a bit of a mess. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, like I said, I haven't got a lawnmower. Well, I'm sure Simbab wouldn't mind you borrowing his. Well, I'll tell you what, then. If you fancy doing my garden all day, be my guest. <sighs> no, thank you. Five pounds an hour sound OK. You can do the back while you're at it. You what? Oh, well, in that case... Looks like we've got ourselves a gardener. It's all right for some, isn't it, eh? If you want something doing, just get your wallet out. Flash get. I brought some cake for you as well. Oh, thanks, Leo. You're the mate. So nobody saw you coming here, then? Nah, sneak round the side of the petrol station. And you're still the only one who knows about our little secret? Yeah, yeah I haven't told anyone. Not even your mates? It's our secret, isn't it? That's right. Nobody else needs to know. So, do you like helping people, Leo? Yeah, it's all right. How come you like it? I don't know. Does it make you feel good? You know, happy? Well, if someone's hurt or something, you know, when they need help. That's right. Have you heard the story of the Good Samaritan? In school. It's a good story, isn't it? Smart. That's what you are, Leo. A good Samaritan. I am. How come? Because you're helping me. And you're helping God as well. What do you mean? Well, God likes people helping each other. It makes him feel better. Does it? Yeah. And he's a nice bloke, God. So it's good to make him feel better. All right. Hey, it was a lovely butty, that. I don't suppose you got me a drink, have you? My coat pocket was full. Oh, well, not to worry. No harm done, eh? I can go and get you the can. I can sneak one out easily. All right, but be careful, though, eh? I'll wait here for you. Right. I wanted to be at the restaurant site by ten. Well, you know what, it'll only be five minutes. I just want to pick up a file. Of course, um, we wouldn't have to worry about our travel arrangements clashing if I had my own transport. Oh, you don't waste much time, do you? First it's a cleaner, then it's a gardener, now it's a car. Well, now I'm on the official payroll. Surely I'm entitled to a company car. I mean, nothing as flash as Max is, just a little runaround. I will be out and about a lot, and I'm sure it'll work out cheaper than taxes in the long run. All right, I'll think about it. Good, so uh, maybe we can look around some showrooms tomorrow, check out a few prices. Yeah, but just window shopping. Remember, I'm not made of money. Of course. What is it? The flowers. Somebody dropped them? Nah. Somebody's left them there. Who? Terry, it's three years, the anniversary of his wife and child dying. They fell off some scaffold in here when this place was getting built. Oh, my God, that's terrible. Yeah, I know. Poor man, I had no idea. Probably explains why I'm seeking solace in this religious thing. Explains a lot of things. You a gardener? Oh, that's better. I know. I'm knackered. My lawnmower's useless. You haven't got a lecky one, have you? I haven't even got a garden, sir. I must admit, though, I didn't have Granty down as being house proud. Yeah, but it's more for that penny one, really, isn't it? I don't think Barry gives a toss about his garden or his neighbours. <laughs> so you're working for Lady Penelope, eh? I'll have to start calling you Parker. <laughs> yes, my lady. <laughs> Neil, what's going on? Sorry, I knocked the tray cans over. You want to be more careful, son. You could have hurt yourself. I'll pick them up later. You stay in here, I can keep an eye on you. No school today, then, Leo? Yeah. Upset stomach. Feel better now. 
Isn't it strange how they suddenly feel better once they know they can stay at home with? Yeah, I was just the same as a kid. An extra hour in bed and then a miraculous recovery and out playing in the afternoon. Like, this one's been out already. Just to the petrol station for some sweets. Hey, it's good to see Terry back at work, isn't it? Yeah, maybe starting to source himself out, eh? Hey? Yeah, let's hope so. Now we've seen the back of that divvy Simon. Yeah. Which one do you prefer, that one or that one? I don't know, Dee. They both look the same to me. Hiya. Oh, hiya, Jack. Jack, which duvet cover do you prefer? <laughs> oh, I don't know, Dee. We fancy a change, don't we, Ron? Yeah. I think I prefer this one. Yeah, I preferred that one. Right, that one it is. OK, see you later. Sure, okay. Dee. Ta da, love. New duvet covers, eh? Well, you know, new stars, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Ron. Hmm? After you went home, Mr. D had a visitor. Who was it? Oh, it wasn't the V18 man, was it? Well, who was it then? Bev. She's back. Hey, Leo, do you want to clean up something these cans up while I get some mud's pizza? Yes, son. So you got this new house all boxed off then? Yep. <laughs> Moving in after the wedding. Loads of room, garden for the kids, can't wait. That sounds boss. I'm made up for you. You'll be next, won't you? Me? Hey, where am I going to get the money to buy a house? All oh, right, but uh, you and Mandy must be thinking about, you know, settling down. Yeah, if only it were that easy. It's Mandy, you know. She finds it really hard trusting her fella again. It's because of the way that Trevor treated her. Mm, sounds like a real the ball, that guy. What's a fella and a woman, eh? Yeah, I know. Hey, cheers, mate. God, listen to us. I'll be crying to me pizza next time. <laughs> See you, mate. See you, mate. Happy gardening. Thank you. See ya. See you, Lee. Oh, he's in. Too much money, then, mate. Oh, cheers, mate. See you, mate. See you later. Dad, can I go to the petrol station? What for? <sighs> just for some sweets. You've already been. Anyway, had a sore stomach this morning. I feel all right now. Can I just to get some Smarties. All right. Don't all day, eh? Dad, Diary. I think I've got an appointment down ten. It would mean leaving yeah, Alice have to on her own. Then. But she wouldn't be on her own. Okay, then. Have bye -bye. the evening off together. Penny and Barry have offered to babysit. They think we should go out for the evening. Oh, there's no need. There's every need. You look wrecked. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, you know what I mean. Well, we can't leave Alice. Patricia, sooner or later, you're going to have to leave Alice with someone other than you and Max. Yeah, well, it's very kind of you, but um, we're both very busy, aren't we, Max? Mm. Well, you both need a rest. We'll look after the kids. Alice has special needs. I don't think it would be fair expecting you and Penny to cope. I don't think these two understand English, do you? Now, look, we'll manage, we'll babysit, and your mother's next door. She used to be a nurse, didn't she? No, but... No buts. The table's booked. So, get these on, and off you go. But... I'm expecting an important phone call, Barry. Well, tough. I'll take a message. Now, give the baby to Penny. Go on. There we go. And you, Ooh. out the door. Come on. Come on. <coughs> and I don't want to see either of you back here before 10 o'clock. <sighs> now, have a good time. Go on. Me, son. Since when have you been allowed to take drinks without asking? I was thirsty. I don't care, Leo. If you want something, ask for it. Do you hear me, or else it's stealing. Sorry, Dad. What's this here? Eh, uh, it's me then. Well, you built this? Yeah. What have I told you about coming to these woods? Eh? I don't want to catch you again, Leo. It's dangerous. God knows what kind of people hang around in here. Sorry, Dad. All right. Come on, let's go. This place gives me the creeps. Somehow. Is uh, little Josh not with you? He's with Arlene. 
All right. Listen, I want a key to the flat. What? You gonna move in again? It's too late for that. I just want to get the rest of my gear out of your place, then I'll be gone for good. Gone? Where are you gonna go, Ron? Dee Dee's. Oh. So you've gone crawling back to air again, have you? It's just a roof over me head, nothing more. Our Jackie's moved out, so there's a spare room. Very cosy. Playing happy families again, are we, eh? Well, does she know about your Mike and Josh? Oh, well, they're gonna be made up to hear about that, aren't they? Oh, there's no need for that. That won't do any good. That won't do anybody any good. Do you know what, Ron? I think, for once in your life, you might be right. Because I don't want to see you or any of your lousy family again in my life. So take your key, get your crappy keks, and stay out of my life forever. Well, that's fine. I just wanted to know that. Barry, I just wanted... That's fine. Oh, and um, you know where the bottles are? Yeah, and don't forget, it's 15 seconds in the microwave. And you must test the bottles first be... Well, I was only te... Barry, I was... Uh, Barry? How is Alice? Oh, she's fine. Got a peep out of her. Thank heavens for that. Mm. Some are nice. Well, not bad. Sauce was a bit tangy. Oh, wow. Well. We'll be stealing that recipe then. Mm -hmm. This pate is lovely. Don't you try some? Mmm. Mmm, that's nice. Mmm. Well, this is pleasant, isn't it? Mmm. Makes a nice change. More wine? Oh, no. I'm fine with this. Ah. It's still early. I feel like we've been here ages. It does, doesn't it? You know what? I'm missing eyes. Yeah, me too. I hope they're not all night with the main course. <laughs> they have got your mobile number. I mean, just in case there's any problem. Hey, that's the point. Do you think I should ring back, make sure she's all right? Probably been trying to get through to us. Well, it wouldn't do any harm, would it? There you go, mate. Loads of juice in there now. It should start. No problemo. Oh, cheers, Ron. You've saved me life. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. It was like the Amazon jungle in that back garden. <laughs> well, don't worry. This little baby here will sort you out. Now, listen, I've souped it up a bit. A Ron Dicko special. Oh. Cut through that lot. No bother. Yeah. All you got to do is give Dad a tug and you're in business. Oh, cheers, mate. Ron, are you ready? Dee, there's uh, no need to come with me, love. I want to come. Yeah, but I'm just going for my clothes. I'll be straight in and out. We're a couple now. We do things together. Yeah, OK. Talk about heart attack. I've almost pulled me kipper. Oh, go on. Put your back into it. You're not tugging hard enough. Go on. Oh, yeah. Bombs away. Yeah, so go on. Give me loads of throttle. Give me loads of welly. Go on. Hey, what's going on? What are you playing at? You're going to flood the engine. There's a baby asleep in there. What are you two playing at? Oh, yeah, of course, right, yes. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, you will be sorry when I report you to Bing's residence committee, right? Noise pollution. You want to have more consideration for your neighbours. And what about you? You're supposed to be doing the back garden, aren't you? Just because I'm paying you by the hour doesn't mean you can stay here all day. I'll get round here and finish it. It's all right, it's all right. Hi, love. Why didn't you tell me, Jack? Tell you what? But Ron and Dee Dee. How was that? Yeah, that. You let me make a fool of myself with Ron. I'm sorry, love. I didn't think it was my place to tell you. How could he do it to me, eh? I mean, after everything we've been through together. I know it's hard, love, but it can't come as a total surprise. I'm running back there, trying to worm his way in with Dee Dee. They are still married. Maybe, but... He's wasting his time, isn't he? She'd never have him back. Not after everything he's put her through. He'll never be mother and lodge around that house. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that, love. You are? He hasn't told you everything, has he? What? I think he may be more than a lodger, Bev. Him and Dee Dee. 
the bag together. But... Oh, you're joking, aren't you? Right? Just staying round the spare room, is he? Where are you going? Back the flat. That two-time and her rags round there getting his clobber now. It's not the only thing he's gonna get. <sighs> Hello, stranger. Sorry? You know, this is the first time we've been out together since Alice was born. No. Is it really? It's incredible. I'd almost forgotten what you looked like. Oh, well, glad we came out this evening, then. <laughs> So am I. You know, we won't be able to do this sort of thing as often as we used to. I know. It was really good of Penny and Barry to offer to babysit, but I don't think they realise how special Alice is. Mm. How difficult it is for us to leave her. I can't stop thinking about her. Can't wait to get home. Me neither. Um, I think we'll skip dessert. Um, can I have the bill, please? Thank you. And then the farmer got his gun and he was running across the field and all the rabbits ganged up and chased after him and the farmer dropped his gun and he was never, ever, ever seen again. One of your own? No, it's one of my mares, actually. She used to tell it us all the time. You like kids, don't you? Yeah, I do. I've got one. A son. What? Stephen. He's two years old. I had no idea. Were you married? <sighs> You're joking, aren't you? Me and his mother couldn't stand the sight of each other. So you don't see each other? She did a bunch of grease. Took Stephen with her. But why? Because I wanted to bring him up on my own, didn't I? Just me and him, father and son. She wasn't having any. So she ran away? Yeah. Took the most important thing in my life with her. My child. Anyway, better get this little fella to bed. Come on, mate. <laughs> Oh, I'm bloody knackered. Well, you haven't been working till this time, have you? Well, it's dark. It's only a tiny patch of grass. Yeah, well, he only had me doing all the back and all, didn't he? Oh, that flaming lawn mower was useless. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I've mucked up all your floor. Hey, I've already washed that once today. Now, get outside and get those muddy boots off. Oh, hi, hi, Skipper. Great, but I've got a pile of work to do already. All oh, right. So, did you get to pick up your grant check? Yep, and I brought it straight into my bank account. All right. You all right? Yeah, of course. Um, no, not really. What is it? Oh, it's a slight cash flow problem. It's this loan again. There's a payment due tomorrow, and I was wondering uh, if you... No way, Mandy. You can't ask her for any of her grants. <sighs> Simba, this has got nothing to do with you. It's got everything to do with me. We got this loan out together. Yeah, but I was a stupid one who went and changed the repayments so got behind again. Mum! Well, I can't afford much. I've only just paid my overdraft off. Hey, you keep your money in your pocket. You're gonna need it. Me and your mum will sort this out together. <sighs> There's really no need. Mandy, tell me how much you need. It's OK. How much? Eighty pounds. You what? You're joking, aren't you? Well, I only miss one week. I mean, I don't know where the money goes. Mum, this is absolutely crazy. You're going to have to start managing your money and looking after it. She's right, you know, man. You know, you've got to keep on top of these payments, you know? You'll have to make a little plan. I oh, know, I'm sorry. Oh, it's OK. I got some extra money for doing the garden, so that'll help with this week. <sighs> yeah, what about next week and the week after that? I mean, God knows where it's going to end. Hi. Hi. How's all this been? Oh, as good as gold. Thomas went out like a light as well. Thanks, Penny. What are you doing back? I'm sorry? Well, you've only been gone an hour. Have you had a meal over? Oh, yes, it was very nice. It's just that, well, we thought we'd better get back, you know, see how things are. See how things are? Max, you phoned up ten times. You know how things are? 
Well, yeah, but we didn't want to keep you in Penny all night, and, uh, well, you've both been so very kind. We can't thank you enough, and, um, listen, we've been thinking the christening's only a couple of weeks away. We'd like you both to be godparents. Are you serious? Well, yes, I mean, after all that you've done for us recently. I'd be delighted. Put it on her. Put it there, mate. <laughs> I think that's about everything. This is nice. Did you buy it? Oh, yeah. Like everything else in this place. I can't imagine you living like this. I mean, you like your little luxuries. Well, all that's history now, isn't it? I'm back where I should be. Yes, you are. Oh, no. Oh, hello. Fancy seeing you two here? Don't mind me, I just live here. Now listen, Bev. Don't listen, Bev, me, you lying little tow rag. Would you just take it easy? Take it easy! I could kill you! Why didn't you tell me the truth, Ron, about you and her? I couldn't. I knew what it would do to you. So instead, you let me find out about you and her from someone else. You know I still love you. You can shout and scream and cry as much as you want to, but it won't help you. Me and Ron are back together. And we're staying together. You'll soon get bored of you again. You won't be able to keep up. Just you watch me. You can't be a proper wife to him. You can't give him what a man expects, what a man needs. Ha! Huh? I think you'll find I've already satisfied him on that score. Oh, my God. You what? Go on, Ron. Tell her. Tell her we've been sleeping together as man and wife. What? You... You... Just the one slide. Tonight, the Lonely Planet Guide to the Land Where the Nuts Come From, and Pele, of course, Brazil. Vast improvement. Yeah, well, it should be. It cost 15 nicker. Oh, come on, Barry. A proper gardener would have cost four times as much. And Simbad's done quite a good job, really. Yeah, I suppose so. Now that it's all been tidied up, how about um, planting a few shrubs and sorting some borders out? You know, add a bit of colour. And in the front here. Hey, Pen, don't you think you're getting a bit carried away? You only sorted this out so the neighbours would keep off me back. Morning. Morning. Oh, looks like somebody else has got the gardening bug. Right. I'm not having him make a show me. I'm getting right onto Sinbad. He's getting down the garden centre. What's with the green fingers all of a sudden? It's not the right time of year for this, is it? Yeah, well, I'm not having Jack the lad there getting one over on me. You what? Just because he's shacked up with a member of the aristocracy, he thinks he owns a place. Flash get. Well, I'm back now. I'll show him. Grab that trowel, will you, son? Oh, no, Dad. I've got to be in work in half an hour. Mick goes away today. Well, you can give us a hand for the half an hour, can't you? I mean, you do live here as well, you know. You should take a bit of pride in the place. OK, all right, half an hour. Bev. Bev. Look, I know you're upset, but what about me clothes? Bev, I need me clothes. Will you just talk to me? Hello. Hiya. Gang, wait. Thank you. Bev, listen, I... Oh, nice day for it, eh, Ron? I've got 
sod this feed as well. Oh, thanks, mate. Feels I've got a mouthful of sawdust. Mm, that's better. So, you're off on your holidays then? Yeah, we're going to seaside. Bet you're looking forward to it, eh? Can't wait. I used to love going to the seaside when I was a kid. It's a cracker, isn't it? Bet you'll have a brilliant time. Hey, what's up, mate? Nothing. Well, what's with a long face all of a sudden? Well, what's going to happen to you? What do you mean? Well, you won't have any food or anything. You'd be starving. <laughs> it's hard, mate, but I'll be all right. How? Well, I've got another friend who looks after me. Who? Someone very special. Someone who watches over me all the time. And he's a mate of yours as well, Leo. It was him who brought us together. Was he? Yeah. He knew that I needed help, so he led you to me. How did he know that? He knows everything, this friend of ours. About you, me, everyone. He's always there watching us, trying to make us do the right thing. What? Like God or something? Yeah, that's right. And what about the lies I told me, Dad? And the stuff I robbed? Well, that's OK. He did it to help me. Just like the Good Samaritan did, helping someone when they're down. Don't worry, Leo. Our friend understands that. <laughs> you did the right thing. <sighs> All right, boys. All right, what can you do with that, mate? Ah. Sure, I can sort you, lads. No problem. There you go. Nice one. Cheers. Have a nice day. Blue chip company, great salary, travel, the works. Oh, that's fantastic. When did you start? I don't. I turned it down. You're not serious. Yeah, a few months ago I would have jumped at the chance, but now, well, I've got commitments. I'm moving away. It's based in Glasgow. Well, have you told Nick? No, and I'm not going to. He'd only feel guilty if I knew I turned it down for his and the kids' sake. He'd probably push me into taking it. Can't win, can you? Yeah, it's not easy being a career woman. Tell me about it. If it wasn't for that schedule of mine, I don't know where I'd be. Listen, I'd better get Alice ready. The health visitor should be here any minute. Yeah, I'd better get going as well. I've left Mick packing the car. I don't want him thinking I'm swinging the lead. Well, have a lovely time. Enjoy your honeymoon. Thanks. <laughs> honeymoon? I thought you weren't getting married until next month. I am, but I couldn't get any time off for a holiday, so... I... Oh, isn't that lovely? Well, eh, take it easy on your fella, eh? Don't be turning his legs to jelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, bye-bye. Tra, have a nice time. Bev. Snake. <laughs> Poor man. He only wants his clothes back. He's had it, I can tell you. Do one. Hello? Yes. Oh, right. Well, so it has to be this afternoon. All right, fine. Listen, um, can I get back to you on that? OK. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Damn. What's up? It's this agent I need to see. He can only fit me in this afternoon. So what's your problem? And what do you think? Max is out all day. I can't get hold of him. I can't turn up for a business meeting with a baby. So leave her here with me? Oh, well... Just... Well, you left her a penny the other night and, well... No disrespect to Penny, but if she can cope... I'm not sure, Bev. I have got a child of my own, in case you hadn't noticed. Hey, look at this one. She's as good as gold. Yeah, but, you know, she can be a bit of a handful. Don't worry. You've got your Auntie Bev. Well, I suppose I'll only be gone an hour or so, and I could leave you a contact number, if you're sure. I am sure. So get back on the phone to that big wig, whoever he is, and tell me you'll be round to see him this afternoon. All right, Pop, I'm getting off. Dad? Oh. Sorry, son. I said I'm going to work. I've got to see Mick before he goes away. Yeah, yeah. All right, you are. So, is she still in there, then? Yeah. It's trying to make you sweat, eh? She's doing that all right. She's got a nerve, and she's keeping all your clothes. You don't want to take this line down. Yeah, I know some, but, uh, well, you know, it's a bit tricky, like. No, it isn't. You're back with me mum, and you were there split up. End of story. She's just got to accept it and grow up. I suppose so. Just Josh, you got to sort out now. What do you mean? Well, I suppose she'd be trying to stop you seeing him as well. I don't know. Well, she's kept hold of your club, but hasn't she? She's going to try and keep hold of your son. Do you reckon? Yeah, but you've got a right to see him. So what you want to do is get down the solicitors and start taking all sorts of writs out. Show her that you don't push over. That's a bit drastic, Dad, isn't this, son? 
What? After all the trouble she's caused our family? It's about time somebody sorted her out. In here? Yeah, cheers. Okay. I'll, um, well, I'll go and see if there's anything else. Okay. Yeah. Don't go blind, you, mate. Oh, all right. All right. Hey, listen, how about the other day? You know, there was a bit off with you. Yo. You know, with our Jackie and that lady. Hey, no what? sweat. It's cool. Oh, nice one. Cheers, mate. Greg, innit? So, uh, settled in all right, have you? Ah, not too bad, you know. It's not really my line of work, though. All right. So, what is your line of work, if you don't mind me asking? Well, you know, bit of this, bit of that. Uh, yeah. Know what you mean, mate. Got a few things on the go myself, you know. A few deals here and there, like... Nice being your own boss, innit? Hey, Timmy, get over here, you flirt. Uh, yeah, come in, boss. Uh, I'll see you. <laughs> yeah, see you, big man. <sighs> yeah, where have you been? Me? Nowhere. Nowhere? I don't want to know where you're going. I want to know where you've been. You what? Oh, never mind. Look, I want you to nip round the house for us, do a bit of gardening. Yeah. Thought Sinbad was your gardener. Sinbad's doing his wind around. So, it's your lucky day, isn't it? Hey, listen, gardening isn't part of my job. Well, it is now. Yeah, but I don't know the first thing about it. Look, Jimmy, just get round there and do it, eh? Just a few shrubs need planting, that's all. Well, what about me clothes? Well, it's a good job you haven't got anything decent on, isn't it? Me and Penny are gonna go and have a look at a few cars. I'll see you later. I see, see you met Jimmy Corkill. You what? Jimmy Corkill. He's a druggie, he's into all sorts. He's not long out of a nick. Go away. Yeah, killed a kid in a road accident. Off his head on cocaine. Listen, the man's bad news. Stay away from him. Yeah. Yeah, I will. All right. Yeah, great. I'm not interrupting, am I? No, I was just giving thanks. Thanking God. What for? For repaying my faith in him. How do you mean? He cast me into the wilderness, Terry. Told me to pray for guidance and wait for a sign. Yeah, I know. Look at me, Terry. What do you see? Uh, just you, Simon. You can't see anything else? Uh, no, not really. Can't you see the weight that's been lifted from my shoulders? Uh, well... Look at me face, Terry. I've been in the wilderness, waiting for a sign. And today it came. Today I saw the light. You what? Where? Here. It came in the form of a child. What did it say? Have faith, be strong, and we'll win. We're going back into battle, Terry. We're going to wage war for God. And this time, we win. Um, her bottle's in the kitchen if she wakes up. I know. 15 seconds in the microwave. And you've got the phone number where I'll be. Well, you've written it in about 20 different places, so yes. And any problem at all, you just ring up. Yeah. Patricia, goodbye. She'll be fine. Go before you wake her up. OK. Liz, bye. Bye. I'll let myself out. Good luck. And don't worry. Mr. and Mrs. Grant, eh? Yeah, well, he's not the first one to make that mistake, is he? And he probably won't be the last. Oh, he probably thought you were my son. Grandson, more like. Very funny. Hey, so what do you think of this, then? This is all right, eh? Oh, my God, you really have got me down as a wrinkly, haven't you? I prefer something a little more racy. Yeah, probably with a racy price. Oh, yeah, this one's all right as well. Oh, sometimes I think all your tastes in your mouth. Ah, oh, now that's what I call a car. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? Don't you like it? Well, I would do if it was ten years younger. 
You really have got a case of the 30-somethings, haven't you? First you write me off. I'm not writing you off. You've got plenty of miles left on the clock. Do you want to get in? No way. Uh, you know the scope of cashing up, don't you, Mike? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'll uh, leave uh, the money side to Mikey, eh? I mean, he's in charge, isn't he? Thanks. Is that OK with you? Yeah, sound. Dad, are we going? Yeah, I'm coming, though, son. I uh, was like, ah, stock levels. Keep an eye on them, won't you? And if you're running low, take the van down the cash and carry, but don't overstock. Dad, we need sweets for the journey. All right, we'll stop on the motorway and get some then. Now, um... Mick, I thought you wanted to beat the traffic. Yeah, I'm coming now. Yeah, well, hurry up, because Gemma's feeling car sick already. Oh, it's all I need. Sounds like you've got to get off, eh? Yeah, I reckon so. Um, is there anything else? Uh, keys might come in handy, mate. Of course. Yeah. There you go. Now, look, I don't want anybody going upstairs unless it's to use the bar, OK? Hey, no sweat, Mick. Hey, and don't you go worrying about this place. I mean, me and Mikey will make sure it's still here when you get back. Now, you get off and enjoy yourself, man. Nah, nice one. See you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. See you later. OK, let's hit the road. See you later. Yeah. See you. See you later. It's all right for some, eh? Yeah, lucky shower. Oh, well, just me and you, then. <sighs> just you, mate. Well, I'm off. Hang on, mate. You can't just get off. We've got loads of orders to do there. Oh, I'll be back in an hour. You can't just get off like that. I'm the boss. All right. See you later, boss. It's a bit pricey. Not much good if you've got kids. Well, in case you hadn't noticed. Yeah, all right, but you're going to have a goddaughter soon, aren't you? You're going to want to take her out for the day. Oh, there's plenty of room for two. And what am I supposed to do? I oh, say so you're planning little trips out already. Don't waste much time. Well, we're godparents, aren't we? We've got to take our duties seriously. Look after little Alice. Oh, we'll be like our own little family. How sweet. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Our own little family. I know you're feeling broody, Barry, and I know you miss your son, but uh, if you're getting at what I think you're getting at... Well, no, but, you know, if if we stay together... But I've only just got over you declaring undying love for me. Now you want me to have your kids. I mean, aren't you missing something out? You know, like getting to know each other, proposals, marriage, then considering? I'm not asking you to marry me or anything. I'm just saying that neither of us are getting any younger. There's no harm in thinking about a baby one day. Ow, come on, Alice. Come oh. on. Be a good girl. Come on. Oh. Sorry about that, short stuff. Hello, Peter Fred. Yeah, yeah. Afraid it'll be about an hour, mate. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, Mikey. How's it going, bud? Oh, bud, me, where have you been? Ah, oh, cool it. I'm back now. I'm just moving some stuff in. What? Well, you know, bit of mine and Gary's gear. Keep us going for the next couple of weeks. Hang on a minute. Are you running to mix flat? Yeah, just while he's away. Keep an eye on the Hang place on. for him. You know Mick said no one was to go up there. I know, but look, we can't have the place lying empty now, can we? Mick was saying that there's some druggy fella hanging around, and we don't want him screwing it, do we? It would ruin his holiday. Look, do us a favour, will you? You know he left me in charge. Look, chill out, Mikey. I'm doing Mick a favour here. Yeah, all right, I will chill out. I've done me wacky here, so I'm off home. You can finish these orders, and I'll be back later to cash up. What's wrong? Well, it's Alice. She wouldn't stop crying. Why, is she all right? I'm not sure. Well, where's Patricia? Um, she's out. Out where? Oh, she had a meeting. Um, I mean, I don't mind. I volunteered to mind her, but I just didn't think she'd be this much of a handful. Is she OK? Yeah, she's fine. But, um, she was making kind of this funny breathing noise, you know, like panting. Oh, well, that'll be a nose. It sometimes gets uh, blocked up. Then she went a weird colour, kind of blue. Blue, are you sure? Well, 
I think so, yeah. It'll be all right. God, I hope so. Uh, what, shall I ring an ambulance? What, do you think we should? No. Is everything all right? Patricia, where have you been? I had to go to a meeting. You had to? Yes, it was important. Well, what about Alice? Isn't she important too? Don't be so stupid, Max. Well, look at her. Max, she's perfectly all right now. Will everybody just calm down? Hmm. There you go, boss. All finished. Yeah, Jimmy. Got a little prezzy for you. You what? Don't say I don't give you nothing. You are joking, aren't you? Does it look as if I'm laughing? Listen, I'm knackered. Look at the state of me. Look at me kecks. These are me prezzy kecks. They're ruining these. Tough. And after you've finished this lot, you can put this lot in round the back. Yes, we thought the back garden could do with brightening as well. Oh, go away, will you? I'm going to be here all night. I've got things to do, you know. What things? Just things, bits and pieces and that. What bits and pieces? Just errands for Jackie, you know. Well, you don't work for Jackie, do you? You work for me, so just get on with it. Yes, boss. Anything you say, boss. Nice to see someone's happy with the work, Jim. Bloody hell, Michael. Is all this noise really necessary? Are we going to have to listen to that rubbish all day? Or am I going to have to look at that tow rag all day? Hey, he's working for me, all right. Yeah, but he should be breaking rocks to murder and get not planting daffodils. I choose who I employ. Now, stop that noise pollution up there, or I'll have to report you to the residence committee. Not until you do something about that scumbag. Go on, son, pump it up. Give us your latest tune. Please. All right. Talk. Look, I'm sorry. I really am. Yeah. I didn't want it to turn out like this. Me neither. So you're going to be all right? I'm going to have to be all right. Yeah. Look, uh, about me clothes. Is that all you care about? Your stupid bloody clothes? What about me? All right, you can have your stinking rags back. I'll deliver them personally myself. Cleansed and chastened. I'm ready to build the church again. We built it up from scratch last time. We have to get out there and spread the word. Tell the whole world about the light I've seen, about the way forward. Well, we could get some leaflets done. I'll start on the schools again. We're going into the front line, Terry. We've got enemies out there that want to destroy us. Yeah, but we've got God on our side. We're God's foot soldiers, fighting the final battle, and we'll win. We'll win at any cost. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, Terry. A fight to the end. Judgment day is upon us. Open your soul to God. Oh, God. You know, I can't believe you left her with the cleaner. Not the cleaner, Max. Bev, who happens to be a mother herself and a friend. Yeah, but the poor girl was terrified. We might want to treat her as a normal child, but she still has special needs. I've just panicked like we panicked when Alice first came home. Yeah, but what would have happened if something was really wrong with her? Bev's not stupid. Yeah, but she's not responsible for Alice either. We are. Do you really think I'd have gone out and left Alice if I thought Bev couldn't cope? If I thought there was the slightest chance of any harm coming to our little girl? Of course not. So I thought we had a schedule. We do, but I had to go out. It's just that it was sheer pandemonium when I came back, and maybe it's because I'm tired. And... We're both tired. It'll get easier. We'll be OK. Well, maybe it would be easier all round if you packed in the work on this restaurant, take the pressure off a bit. Max, I'm fine. I can handle it. But is it worth it? Yes! I enjoy it. It's important to me. Oh, Max, we've been through all this. But look at all the upset you going to this meeting has caused. Was that worth it? Yes, it was a very successful meeting. As a matter of fact, I might... might have got some more work out of it. What? They asked if I might be interested in taking over one of their smaller accounts. Patricia, I hope you said no. I said I'd think about it. 
Bloody nerve of him. He's probably planting cannabis or something. Yeah, should have hung the drug he'd get. Yeah, that looks like you got your clothes back. I know, she stuffed them in a bin bag. I look like I'll step to. There you go. All right, what are you doing, Bev? You're gonna ruin them. Look, me jacket and everything. What the... What's this? <laughs> Forgot to mention. I carried out a few alterations. What are you looking at, lackey? But why? Because I hate you, Ron. Because you think of no one but yourself. You'll go where your socks are washed and your tea's on the table. My life is in tatters. So here's your clothes in tatters. Are you going to take this from her, Dad? It's all right, son. Leave it to me, Ace. She's, she's just a bit upset, that's Too all. Too right I'm a bit bloody upset. I mean, how many other lives are you going to ruin, eh? First me, then Mike. Who's next? You what? Oh, my God. Hang on a minute, hang on. What are you on about? Are you going to tell him, or will I? Oh, no. What? Tell me what. Well. Dad, what is it? Mike, say hello to your son. You can join us on the true path to God. You want your head tested, lad? Now let me pass. Oh, look, you're right to me, baby. What do you think you're doing? Will you let her pass? Don't you think it's worth a couple of minutes of your time to change your lives forever? Look what you've done now. You're going to be ashamed of yourself, terrifying children on the street. If you don't listen, you won't hear. I can show you the way to find God, the way to find true happiness. We'd find happiness if you packed your bags. We've had enough of you in this neighbourhood. <laughs> What about you? Will you listen to me? I can show you the way to a new life. Soon as show you the way to the nearest bus stop. Just a couple of minutes of your time, I can show you the true path. True path? Your true path is at least 100 miles from here. Look, just go away. Do you know, I wonder how Barry Grant would take it if he knew that you were making a nuisance of yourself like this on his property. Barry Grant doesn't scare me. I'm not scared of him or anyone else. We'll see about that. Mike seems a bit quiet. Do you know what's up with him? He's probably just a bit nervous about his job interview tomorrow. I thought he'd be over the moon. He seems a bit down. I can't get anything out of him. Yeah. Uh, I think I forgot my key. No, I've got mine. She's got a cheek showing her face around here. She should be ashamed of herself after what she did to your clothes. Anyway, what are you trying to prove? Just leave it, A.T. Have you seen the state of this place? This is your fault, and you and them kids off the clubs. Make it go mad if you knew you were hanging around here, messing. Where else can we go? Five minutes of your time, and I can show you the way. Aren't you interested in a new life? How about a new life with Michelle Pfeiffer? Can you arrange that for us? People don't realise they carry on committing more sins. Hey, me. I've got no sins, mate. I'm pure as the driven snow. Everybody sins, but it's not the end of your life. Sins can be forgiven! Who's the balloon, Ed? Listen to me! He's a nutter. Never mind all that. What about this place? What about this place? Well, I wasn't here last night, and it's a pig's day. Ah, no problems, Mike. It'll soon be sorted out. Just give us a minute. And what's all this for? Oh, this, uh Well, I've been out to Nick about a week or two now, and I thought I'd have a bit of a come and out do. No way, Greg. I'm not having that. Why? What's wrong? What's wrong is it's mixed flat. You shouldn't even be kipping here. Never mind having parties. Oh, lighten up, Mike. It's only a few drinks with a couple of mates. You've got no mates having anyone up here. 
Look, why don't you just chill out? Mick's not even gonna know we've been there. Hey, you can have an invite if you're good. Very good. Listen, is there any chance of you talking more to this? Look, Mick's been good to you these past few months. He's trusted you to help mine the flat. If your dad's gonna have a party, tell him to have it at his own house. Right, I just gotta nip out for a bit. Greg, we open up in an hour. I gotta see a man about some vodka. I won't be long. You can manage, I know you can. Eh, uh, Dad? What is it, son? Don't you think it'd be better if you had your party round at our place? Well, I need somewhere bigger. I don't want mixed stuff getting wrecked, though. You sound just like Mike here. Look, nothing's gonna get wrecked except me. Just be cool and let's all have a good time while we're young enough to enjoy it. Michael, have you got the van key? He's got a few deliveries. Greg, for keys. Oh, sorry, I need the keys for the van. I'm... Mr. Crosby has it in the mornings for the flowers. It's a standing arrangement with Mick. I'm sorry, things to do. I won't be long. How long? We've got customers waiting for deliveries. Listen, I'll give you a ring when he gets back, okay? Who is he exactly? It's Mick's new assistant. He doesn't seem very reliable. And Gary's dad. Oh, uh, well, I suppose I'll, uh, I'll just have to hang on then. Right, I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Okay. So have you decided to talk to me? For God's sake, will you leave me alone or I'll call the police? I don't know what you're laughing at, Gary. If there's any damage to the mix flat, it's between you and your dad. It's got nothing to do with me, OK? Is she all right? Yeah, she was a bit restless, but she's first asleep now. Damn. I thought that appointment was later. Um, Bev, would you mind staying for a couple of hours just to look after Alice while I go out? I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Um, she might get sickly again or something. Oh, I'll phone Max, ask him to take a couple of hours off. I'm sure he can work from here anyway. I'm sorry about this. No, it's OK. Honestly, it's fine. I do understand. Hi, Max. All right, son. You, um, on your own? I left in the ledge, more like. Look, Michael, I know you're in a bit of a state of shock over little Josh and everything, but we've got to keep this quiet, son. How? I'm a father. I don't want to be, but all of a sudden I am. And that means Josh is my mum's first grandchild. How can I keep someone like that from her? Because it would split the family apart, son. What would your mum think of me if she knew I didn't miss from her? And what would you think if she knew he'd walked out on a kid who was a first grandchild? Well, I'm not going to be turning me back on him. What, you mean you'll still see him even though you're back with me, Mum? Look, I will make sure that Josh is provided for. I'll give him as much as Bev will let me give him, and I'll see him when I can. Don't forget, Michael, I lived with him for months, you know. I thought he was mine. So I still kind of feel like he's mine. Even now, he is important to me, you know. Well, why did you finish with Bev, then? Because she had the truth for me, son. But Josh was really yours. She lied to me. If it's not your fault, how can my mum blame you? I should have told your mother everything when we got back together, but I never. And if she found out now, God knows what had happened. Not time to find out, eh? I've got an interview for a job tomorrow, and I know I've got a good chance of getting it. How can I get started in a career when I've just become an instant dad? By forgetting all about it and getting on with your own life. Just leave it to Josh, he's my son. Does anyone else know? Ah, Jackie. Oh, great, yeah. How am I supposed to just wipe it out of my mind and pretend nothing's happened when my own sister knows? Yeah, well, she's agreed to say nothing. That's what we were talking about when you walked in on us the other week. Yeah, and that's when you said nothing when she wanted to get a flat with Katie. The price is silent, eh? No, it wasn't like that, Michael. I just feel like I'm the one that's driven Aunt Jackie away and I don't want to split the rest of the family up. Not now me and your mum have got this far. Dad, I don't know what to do. Michael, believe me, you'll get over it in time, so when you've settled into a good career. Don't let it screw up your life. I mean, it's not as if you even knew Josh that well, is it? Look, for God's sake, I was there when he was born. I delivered him. I didn't even know that he was mine. Yeah, I know, but, but since then, Michael, be honest. I mean, how much time have you spent with him? None to speak of. And if you hadn't have found out now, son, you wouldn't have given another thought. You're wrong. You saw me video diary. Look, Dad, I knew we'd both been with Bev that day, and I knew there was a chance that Josh was my kid. And now it's the truth. 
He is mine. So what are you going to do? Hi. How are you, you, love? <laughs> I just need to see if you'd heard about the job. Yeah, yeah, he said. Uh, got an interview for one in Manchester tomorrow, haven't you, son? Sounds like a good number. Oh, brilliant. Right, well, look, uh, I'd better get off. What do you think about what I said? Okay. See you. Yeah, it's all. He decided to stay celibate. How do you mean? Well, you know, my dad and Bev's baby, Josh. Yeah. I've just found out he's not my dad's, he's mine. Are you sure? Yeah. Bev wants to tell me mum, but my dad's managed to stop her so far. Yeah, but are you sure? I mean, have you had tests or anything? Yeah, well, I gave blood tests for DNA ages ago. I think what he just told me now. Well, isn't that just a little bit convenient? I mean, your dad's just left her and gone back to your mum. How when are you getting that? Well, Bev's been done with the babies to look after. Your mum and dad have got back together. Maybe she'd make up something like this to get back at them. But you're gonna have to talk to her, Mike. You're gonna have to get some proof. But what if it's too? I don't know what to do. Oh, well, you'll never know what to do unless you find out for sure. Your whole future could be affected. You're gonna have to find out for sure. Look, I'm sorry, I haven't got the time. It all starts with this. An understanding of what's in here, it's real meaning. Right, OK, well, I've got to go to work now. Just give me a couple of minutes of your time and I'll let you go about your business. It'll change your life forever, I promise you. I'm sorry, I haven't got the time to... Why are you rushing away from me? Just give me two minutes, that's all I ask. Look, just leave her alone, all right? I'm just trying to tell her that life can be so much better if you follow the teachings of Christ. Yeah, well, I don't think she's interested. I can't understand people not wanting to change their life for the better. You're conning yourself. You're running away from the real world with your phony crap-pot religion. You don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. I understand that your sort of religion resulted in blowing up houses. That was a sign from God. No, that was a sign from someone who's unbalanced. Now, if you don't mind, you can leave me and my mother alone, all right? Oh, thanks, love. Are you all right? Yeah, why isn't he locked up after what you did? I mm -hmm. should be. He needs treatment. Aren't you late for work? Yeah, I know. I've been trying to ring Mr. Maguire. What for? Final demand from the HP company. They say my sewing machine installments haven't been paid for the last three months. Another one? But I thought you said that all your outstanding debts were paid off by that new loan. I know. Mum, why didn't you read the agreement properly? You're going to have to speak to him. This isn't right. Look, I'm going to be late for work. Will you ring him? You're better on the phone than me. Yeah, I suppose so. Is there anything else he said he'd pay off? Yeah, the catalogue. I owe nearly £300. Ron. Coffee, tea. Oh, yes, please, Jack. Lots of people have their marriage vows renewed in church. Oh, what do you think? Hey, can't we talk about this later, love? Anyway, what's brought this idea on so suddenly? Oh, it just came into my head. Oh, please, Ron. But we're back together now, love. I mean, why do we need it? Well, I want everyone to know. And I want our marriage mended in the eyes of the church. Well, surely you're proud of what's happened to us coming back together like this. Especially in this day and age. Don't you think that's something worth celebrating? It's a bit embarrassing, you know. Well, what's embarrassing about letting people know you've had your bad times and now you've come together? Oh, look, I know how you feel about the church and everything, but it is important to me. What will you think about it? Please. All right. They are, love. Thanks. Jack, you're the first to know. Oh, what's this? Dee, don't you think we should talk some more? <laughs> well, I've only asked you. You can always say no. Now Ron and me are back together again. I've asked him to come to church and have his marriage vows renewed. Oh? Well, don't you think that's a good idea, letting people know that we're back together for good? Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice idea, too. Now all I need is for him to say yes, isn't it? Hey, I like that. Mmm, I thought it would look perfect on the front of the house. Where do you want this one? Uh, is it the Bavarian Spiriculosa? You want? It says on the label. Yes, it is. Um, right hand side against the fence there. Oh, um, Jimmy, could you come in for a moment? All go, isn't it? Barry wants this up at the front of the house. I haven't finished these plants yet. Oh, but he was looking forward to it being up when he got home from work. The tools are in the garage. Stuff around the side of the house, if you don't mind. Does that mean lackeys and all, does it? 
Uh, don't forget the blueberries. Can't get the staff nowadays, can you? Oh, gracious, is he? Uh, yeah, you couldn't do us a favour and give him his dummy, could you? Oh, sure. <gasps> Aren't you good? Do you think you love Rabble Bailey? Me? Yeah. Well, actually, Barry wants us to... Does he? I feel so ridiculous talking about it. Don't be soft. What's wrong with wanting a baby? When you're the wrong side of 40. I thought I'd given the idea up years ago, but don't you worry about it. If you want a baby, then go for it. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. I'll tell you exactly how easy it is if you're not sure. I think I can manage that part. It's just the years afterwards. Well, I'm glad about Josh. It's made my life better. Even if his dad, Ron, has gone for good. Is there no chance of you and him? Doesn't look like it. But I'll never regret having Josh, will I? You've got nothing to lose. If you want a baby, then go for it. If you don't leave, I'll have to call the police. Why are you frightened of me? All I want to do is offer you the chance of a new life. Oh, Ron, get him out, will you? Just listen to me. All I want to do is talk to you. I'll tell you how I repented and show you how to begin a new life. Out, sunshine. Do you want me to call the police? No need. He's leaving, aren't you? Go on, move. <laughs> All I want to do is talk to you. Out, I said! <laughs> Bloody madman. If he comes anywhere near again, do you tell me, all right? <sighs> you OK, love? Yeah, yeah. He frightens me. It's people like him who give religion a bad name, perverting everything to suit themselves. I mean, the way he twisted Terry's and Katie's minds, the way he controlled them. Yeah, well, I'll control him <sighs> if he comes round bothering you again. Listen, love, I've come to tell you what I decided. Well, if it's what you want, you know, renewing our vows and that, well, I'll do it. Is it what you want, though? Yeah. Oh, Ron. Oh, you don't know what this means to me. Oh. <gasps> I do, love. I do. Hi. Hi, love. There's a letter on the side. I think it's from the catalogue. Oh, God. Did you phone Mr Maguire? Well, I tried a dozen times, but there was no answer. Oh, he hasn't paid this one off either. Serious arrears. Is it a threatening legal action, Beth? I wish you'd let me read that stupid contract before you signed yeah, it. Yeah, well, I have signed it. What am I going to do? Well, we'll have to make Mr McGuire do what he promised. What if he's run off? What if he's a con man? Mum, don't panic. There's no point in worrying until we've talked to him. It might just be a mistake. Oh, God, I hope so. Hey, Mum. Hiya. Mum, can you lend us three quid so I can go to the no, multiplex? I'm sorry, me? I can't. It's only three quid. Yeah, well, I haven't got three pounds. I haven't even got three pence. Nice one, Rachel. Perfectly timed as usual. I only wanted three quid. Yeah, well, tough. Mum's got money problems. Big ones. Mum! Blood and sand. See you, Pen. Oh, good night, Parker. Do you want? Good night, Parker. Oh. Lady Penelope's butler. Oh, Parker. Yes, my lady. Yeah, well, you better watch out. Cos Lord Grant will have you dressing up like a French maid next. You know that? I should be so lucky. Draw. Yeah, I see ya. We can buy the other line that was. Well, look who it is. Just ignore that, okay? Why shouldn't you know the latest about us? I want everyone to know. D, will you leave it? I think it's only fair to tell you about a decision me and Ron have made. We decided to go to church and have our marriage vows renewed. We're going to make a real fresh start together. Is this true? Yeah. Well, now she knows where she stands. <sighs> Darling, where have you been? You've been gone hours. Sorry, what's wrong? <sighs> she wouldn't stop crying. I was doing everything I could to calm her down. Max, she feels oh. as if she's got a temper, Dad. Haven't you noticed? Come here. Oh, I was just trying to get her to sleep. Her where breathing. Are Max, her breathing. It's laboured, wheezing. Oh, it is, isn't it? Right, let's get her into hospital. On earth, didn't you call the doctor? You told me not to do that last week. We were warned about overreacting. Yeah, but this is different. She's got a temperature and her breathing is wrong. Are you sure we should take her? I mean, remember what happened last... Yes, I am perfectly sure. Please just get your car keys. Let's go. Come on in, guys. The night is young. How many are coming? Who's counting? Because you've got a vector place, that's why. Hey. 
take no notice of my boss. He was born middle-aged. Look, why don't you come up after closing time and I'll save you a lot and a woman if you're quick. Do you plan out the trench there? All right, Jimmy. All right. What's all this, mate? Well, I'm having a bit of a party. Do you want to come on upstairs? Don't mind if I do. Hey, hold the pizza, son. This man needs a stiff drink. Hey, I'd have asked your lovely missus. But, uh, you know, I have got some spare talent anyway. What's it meant to have had on Jimmy Corkerley? You told him to stay a million miles away from that bloody toll rack. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Hey, I hear you've just done time. Oh, you haven't told you that, like? Oh, I just did. Hey, it's no problem. I've just come out myself. Oh, yeah? What were you in for? Robbing me. How about you? Housebreaking, mate. Is that right? Hey, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, like, mate, but uh, I believe you're into the old gear and that. I've been known to dabble, yeah. Hey, well, can you get your hand on some stuff, like some good stuff? Maybe. Maybe not. Depends. I don't touch it myself, like. But I've got a few mates here that would appreciate the odd bag of something tasty. Can I help you out? No problem, yeah. All right. Well, I'll make some introductions, then. Cheers, mate. If Mick gets to find out about this, he that'll be out of a job, you know. Well, what can I do? Go and tell him to turn the music down for the kickoff. He won't listen to me. This is crazy. Look, I'll do it myself. And remember, this has got nothing to do with me. I want the music turned down and you lot out of here, especially dickheads like Danny and Nerd. Like who? Do you know what I mean? Look, just carry on with your work and stay cool. But Mick's giving you the chance. I said stay cool, all right. <laughs> That's right. The flat above the pizza shop on Brookside Parade. It's getting well out of hand up there. I don't know what we're going to do. I phoned the police. Oh, you what? Well, we can't stop them. And I'm scared the mixed place being wrecked. There's people up there up to all kinds. People up to what? Oh, look, just forget it. Let's get on with our work, eh? <laughs> what the hell's that racket? Greg's having a bit of a party. This is outrageous. This is private property. You know, you've no right to be throwing glass. <laughs> leave me alone. If somebody go and turn that blasted music off. That? The police? That's right. When faced with authority, they run. Ah, oh, Mr. Crosby, isn't it? Ah, oh, Constable Coburn, at last. Well done. Look, the man you want has just run upstairs. They're trespassing on private property. Yes, yes, Mr. Crosby. Come on, I'll identify him for you. Just calm down, Mr. Crosby. Leave it to me and I'll, uh, have a quiet word. A quiet word? What are you going to do? Give him a clip round the ear? That's enough, thank you, Mr. Crosby. You should run the lot of them in, get a black Mariah down here and arrest the whole bloody shower of them. Mr. Crosby, please, let's just settle down, shall we? Well, if you won't do anything about it, I will. Mr. Crosby! But Mr. Crosby, please! <laughs> excuse me, excuse me! Right, thank you! Excuse me, that's it! The party's over! The beats are here now! Where's that blasted music coming from? Oh, right, thank you. Let's get this blasted thing off, shall we? Oi! Oi, leave that alone, will Turn you? this thing off! I said leave it alone, Grandad! Yes. Oh, no, I won't. Yes. I am confiscating this Come. in the interest of public order, Constable, you're my witness, under the, uh, under the Noise Prevention Act. He's trying to steal me ghetto blasters there, mate. Leave it alone, Mr. Crosby, please! Let go of it! Look, Constable, this man is trespassing. I want him arrested now. Mr. Crosby, will you please calm down? Well, do something then, for heaven's sake. I can't do anything without cooperation. Now, let's all stay calm, eh? Right, that's it. I've had it. That's enough. I'm going to do this myself. This is a citizen's arrest. It's into custody for you, my lad. All right, all right. You've got no right to take over another man's home like this. Come on, stop it. Come on. Stop this. You get out of here. Right, come on. Control from PC Colvin. Right.
How long before they let us see her? I can't bear this. She'll be all right. Don't worry. Mate, this has got nothing to do with me. I only work here. I am telling you, this is an outrage. I'm an upstanding citizen. For God's sake, Constable Coburn, will you tell them who I am? Down at the station, Mr Crosby. Look, will you please tell them they've got the wrong man? Starting next on ITV, Soldier, Soldier. Here on 4, the North Sea oil story continues. The early 80s saw some of the world's most massive structures beginning to pump ashore millions of pounds worth of liquid gold. But were the benefits frittered away? Wasted windfall after the break. involved in fights. It wasn't my fault of anyone's, it was Mr Crosby's. Binks! Yeah, we'd already called the police to break the party up, but he decided to wade in and break it up himself. I just wanted to stop it. You shouldn't have got involved. Have you been charged? No, just caution. Anyway, I'm not bothered about all this crap. I've missed an interview in Manchester today. Oh, I've forgotten all about that. Well, you'll have to get on the blower, won't you, and fix up a new date? Oh, yeah, what'd you expect me to say? I've been stuck in a lousy cop shop for disorderly behaviour. Plenty of applicants anyway. Well, have you missed your chance? Yeah. Where's Greg? I could kill him for this. Who, Greg? He's long gone. He went out the door like a rocket. Yeah, he got up before me. Oh, come on, now, let's go. You get someone to clean that out as soon as possible. I mean, what do you think you've achieved by this? It's outrageous. It's absolutely farcical. Sorry, you keep a law abiding citizen in custody and you want anarchy going on out on the street. I shall be informing my MP about this humiliation. Don't you worry about that. Morning. There's no one here to meet me. Doesn't look like it. Oh. Come on in, Jimmy. Put it on. Yeah, boss. What do you reckon? Nice one, eh? That's not bad, that at all. Right, come round here now. I want you to give me amber these. Well. Oh, wait, hey, come on. Not more holes to dig. Why do you want these? These are BT soft, lad. You put them either side of the door, don't you? Mm. Well, come on, they get them round here. Eh? All right, all right. Have a look what it looks like. Oh. Did you bit heavier, Addy? <laughs> So, what do you reckon to these, then? Um, well, you're not going to leave it there, are you? Do you know how much these cost? Fifty pounds? Seventy-five pounds. Here's the other one. Well, they're wasted here. I mean, the door's in a corner. It's just not imposing enough. I know where they'd go. Jimmy, you'll have to get them back to the garden centre. Oh. No, 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 nothing quite so drastic. They'd look perfect outside the doors of the club. Hey, yeah. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, till some drunk decides to take them home for a souvenir. Or peas in them. No, I quite fancy the idea of having them round there. And you could take them in of a night, couldn't you? You're the boss. Right, go ahead then. Get them round there now. Oh, before you do that, Jibby, there are some more shrubs round the back. I've put some canes in where I want them planting. Yes, my lady. What was that? I'm on my way. Good. Hasn't got much style, has he? I'll have to teach him a bit about gardening. Hey, listen. Have you given any more thought yet to us, uh, you know, having a baby? I'm still pondering. You'll be the first to know. Yeah, I'm up to date on the posters. Um, well, once the artwork comes through, I'll bring it in for your boss. Well, it's, um, it's hard to describe, really. Um, the graphics guys have come up with a sort of colourful, impressionistic kind of image, yeah. How long is this going to take? Um, well, look, I'll try and bring the artwork in for you by Friday evening, of course, yeah? OK, yeah, yeah, OK, thanks, fine. All right, Sandra, I've really, I've really got a dash. OK, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye. 
What are you doing talking to them? I have to keep in touch with the client. Any more news on Alice? Sister says she's stable. Well, they said that over an hour ago. Anything else? They think she's got a respiratory infection. Once the consultant's done his round, sister will get us in to see him. Right. Hello? Yes, she is. It's for you. Sorry, gave me a number. <laughs> uh, hello? Sandra, hi. Yeah, the press ads. What about them? Yeah. And the worst thing of all is you lost me a flaming job. Instead of an interview, I'm stuck down a lousy cop shop. Oh, you don't know how sorry I am. I want you and I want Gary off the flat. Oh, no way. It's not your flat. There won't be any problems, Mike. Cross me heart. Look, I know I've made a few mistakes, but I've learned my lesson now. I mean, I must have been crazy risking the second chance Mick's given me at this place. Has anything gone missing? Rob, like? Well, Gary says not, no. And what are you doing inviting Corkle upstairs? He's a druggie and a robber and he's been in the nick. Jeez, if the missus would have gone up there and searched the place and found druggies up there. I must have been crazy. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, you know Mike will give you the bullet if he finds out about this, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, no. But if the busies hadn't have been called out, then no one would have taken any notice, would they? I mean, what Pratt phoned them up? I did. Me own lad. You grasped me up. You went too far, Dad. Mick told you not to let that Jimmy fella in. And his stuff. It could have got wrecked and robbed anything. I just wanted your mates out. Yeah, but you grass me up, son. And I'll do it again and all, if you have another party. You did the right thing, Greg. Yeah, I suppose you're right, son. At least one of us has got some sense, eh? Yeah, well, maybe he has. Right, we better get this place sorted. You carry on upstairs, Gary. OK. And I'll be back later, make sure there's no more parties. Hey, Mikey, there's no need, really. I mean, you can trust me. All yours, Mr. Crosby. Now, listen, you. Before you say anything, Dave, uh, I want to apologize. I mean, that party, it was crazy. It was a mad idea. Well, I... And that stupid business about the stereo, I mean, look, I'd had a few too many to drink, and uh, I don't normally touch it myself, usually, but uh, I got a bit carried away, you know? I mean, and I'm so sorry. I'm genuinely sorry. What can I say? Well... I suppose we could overlook it this time, but I do not relish being treated like a common criminal. Neither do I, neither do I. Uh, no hard feelings, Dave. Yeah, I might have a read through that. See what you think. Hey, go on, lads, off you go. Look, I'm warning you, lad, if you don't stop hassling my customers, I'll have you locked up. <laughs> Haven't you heard of free speech? That's all I'm practising. You're frightening my customers. He's just been hassling two kids here, he's driving business away. I've got customers scared stiff of you. I lost customers yesterday and all. That's free speech. An overwhelming majority of people along here want you out of the neighbourhood. You're all fools. I'm offering you the chance of a better life, and all you can think about is money and your businesses. I'm not leaving here until my work's done. Oh, is that right? Well, we see about that. God. How long does it take them to let us know? You've got meetings. No, nothing that can't wait. Uh, Barry knows where I am, so he won't want me to do anything else. Oh, you resent me working, don't you? Yeah, you do. I can see it in your face. I don't like your mind being on publicity campaigns when our daughter is ill in there. Oh, when she's at home and perfectly well and happy. Well, it's not for me to say, is it? And I can't stop you working. It's your decision. Fine, so you, you don't pull the blame on me. It's not a question of blame. All I'm saying is Alice is in there and we don't know what's wrong. I mean, we don't know how long she'll be here. I just think you could have cancelled your work for the time being. Or well, for good. Like, like I say, it's, it's your decision. All right, well, if I'm such a bad mother, I'll just pack it all in today. I'm not saying that. But that's the way you'd prefer it. Some babies. Like Alice, have a, a short life expectancy. The fact is, she's ill. Possibly very ill. I, I just think... Shouldn't you... Shouldn't we try and spend as much time with her as possible? You know, two years ago, with a baby like Alice, you'd have jumped at the chance of giving up work. You hated your job. You made skiving off into an art form. 
Don't you think that's just slightly off the subject? So, what if I were to ask you to give up work to look after Alice now? Would you do it? Oh, Patricia, that is purely hypothetical. Well, it wouldn't have been hypothetical two years ago, so why should it be now? Because I've got this business opportunity with the restaurant. I've got a chance to make something of myself. To give my family a, a better life. Exactly. I don't think I haven't thought of giving it all up. I was thinking about it this morning, but no, Max, there are things I want to do, including giving my family a good life. And work's the way I'll do it. Even if Alice is sick in hospital, even if she isn't here for the christening. Whether Alice is here for three months or 30 years, I think I'll be a better and happier mother for her if I can do what I want as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to seem like some selfish, unfeeling bitch, but I do believe that I can cope better with what Alice needs from life if I'm fulfilled. Well, that's what you want. So, whoever makes their fortune first, the other retires, right? You're on. Mr. and Mrs. Farnham. Aye, aye. Hope you haven't come round to complain about the state of my garden. Uh, no. What do you think of the bait seeds, Ron? Very nice. What about the new lamp? Smart. Cost nearly 200 quid, that. 75 quid each for the bait trees. This statue costs well over a ton. Is that right? Yeah. Look at all the new bushes there. I mean, when you think about it, it makes your place look pretty tatty, doesn't it, Ron? Yeah, all right, all right. You made your point. It's a pity you don't look after your shop so well, isn't it? Well, if your bog's blocked, see, Simbad. Barry, I'm talking about the nut job, Simon. We're all gonna go bankrupt round there if that creeping Jesus carries on frightening and hassling our customers. Why, what's he up to? Oh, do you know he's spouting off about the Bible, repent your sins and that? I've already had two women send their husbands round the shop because they're scared stiff of him. Here's my son, then. This proves it. Why? Do you think I was lying? To get your mum and dad? I don't know, something like that. Oh, I wish I'd never gone for this flame and blood test. You might be his dad, Mike, but wish to God he was Ron's son. Yeah, it'd be much easier, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? But your mum pushed your dad into doing these tests, and I was stupid enough to lie to him and hide the results from him. I did it because I didn't want to lose him. Oh, your mum's won now, hasn't she? She's got him back. She's even managed to get him into church for this marriage renewal thing. Well. Oh, hasn't she mentioned that? Oh, she made sure she told me in front of him. She's won and she's going to hang on to him with this church stuff. Nobody mentioned anything to me. Has anyone mentioned to her that you're the natural father? Well, my dad asked me not to. What a surprise. Look. I feel bad about this. I've got a kid. I've got no job, no place of my own. Just a degree and something called a future. Look, I know I've had no joy in the job front yet, but when I do, I'll get something sorted. I'll send money every week. Yeah. I know it's not much, but take it. I'll get some more from the bank. I'll get an overdraft. Put it away, Mike. It's really good of you, but I don't want anything. Bev, he's my kid. Medically and all that, yeah, but not really. He's my kid and Ron's. If I just had one wish, it would be that Ron was back here with me and Josh. And I know that really that's what your dad wants. Is that because he's got more money than me? No. Because I miss him. I want him. I love your dad. Why did I lie to him about the baby? I'm back. Hey, look, can you spare me a couple of minutes? No, no. Just five minutes no, of your time. I can change your you life know. forever. Oi! I've had enough of you. 
you can't stop me from spreading the word. <laughs> Do what you like. I've got God with me. It's good that you got him on your side, because if you chase any more of my business away, I'm gonna plant you. Now, are you gonna disappear or what? It's all right, mate. I'll take over here. I just wanna have a little word with them about hassling people around me shops. It's all right, I know them. Now, listen, you, you little piece of crap. My patience is running out with you. Now, take your Bible and pack up and get as far away from me as you can. All right? I said, all right! Break every bone in my body. I don't care. You won't chase me away, because I know I'm right. Listen, you won't be as cocky when you're getting ten years for kidnapping me, do you? <laughs> Tell the police. I know you won't, because you think too much of your mate, Terry. So far, he's been kept out of it. But if anybody starts mentioning kidnapping, then he might get roped in. Don't you threaten me. Go on, beat me up. Kill me, even. I know you won't hurt me, because you think too much of Terry. You couldn't cope if he went down, could you? Because of what he knows about you, murderer. Jackie's covering them. I'm sprucing this place up a bit. Now I'm home, I've got some time to do it. Well, good. There's another reason as well. Lord Mock across the way there has been posing about his lamp and his statue and what have you. So you have to go one better? Exactly. We'll show him up. This is going to go over there and it'll make his poncy wall lamp look like a flaming nightlight. And what about uh, electricity? Connecting it up? Easy peasy. I just connect it up to the crimbo light circuits. The wire was already in. I'm going to leave you to it. Don't forget, we're going to see Father Heaton later. Do we have to? Can't you just fix up the time for the church in there? Don't be soft. We're renewing our marriage vows. He wants to talk to both of us. Hey, Pen, come and have a look at this. What? The Dixon Santa keep up with a grand save. Have you seen the stays of that lamppost? Oh my god. No wonder Max calls them the clampets. Hey, it doesn't look as if they've got the baby with them. I hope everything's all right. I'm sure she'll be okay. I'll give him a while to settle in and I'll go over. She's doing fine. They're treating her for a chest infection. We've kept her in for observation. Oh, that's a relief. When can she come home? Oh, tomorrow, hopefully. I'll see to this if you're busy. Thanks. God, I've got loads of calls to return. You know, it's funny. When you've got a baby and she's not in the house, it just feels so strange. I can't settle. I've never had the experience. Oh, it's true, I can assure you. Um, do you think... Do you think I could cope with having a baby? I mean... Do you think I'm too old to have children? I said that's serious between you and Barry? Well, it's something we've just talked about. I mean, neither of us are getting any younger, especially me, and um, Barry says he's always wanted children. Oh, this is a surprise. Has he asked you to marry him? Oh, God, you know what Barry's priorities are like. Look, I'd sooner you didn't mention this to anyone. Oh, no, of course not. It must seem really odd, my talking like this. No, nah, not at all. I'm sure everyone has those feelings at some time or another. It's strange, I thought. Any impulse to be a mother had gone years ago. But now it started me thinking. I mean, should I seriously think about it? Will I regret not having a baby when I'm old and decrepit? No one to look after me. Well, I can't help you. It's yours and Barry's decision, but um, I bet you wouldn't regret having a baby. Well, you'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Yeah. You're just in time for the big switch on, love. Oh, come on. We're going to be late for Father Heaton. Oh, hang on, hang on. It won't take a minute. You just stand there. Hey, call out a lamp. This'll look like Eddiston Lighthouse, this. 
Right, ladies and gentlemen. Now then, I could have had Little and Large, I could have had me pick of Everton or Liverpool FC, even one of the Royals, but no. I have asked our local club owner and entrepreneur, Mr Barry Grant. What's this? I'm inviting you to officially switch on our new lamp. I've got work to do. Oh, come on, Barry, don't be a spoiled sport. It is for the good of the whole close, you know, not just us. Well, can't you find someone else? Barry, please, only take it a second. All right, what have I got to do? Right, that's switching there. He's a fool. What, this one here? Yeah, yeah, but not yet, not yet. Michael, can you get a drum roll on that thing? Right, ladies and gentlemen, I now call on Mr Grant to officially switch our lamp on now. Ta-da! Oh, what has happened? Oh, nice one, Ron. It's very impressive, that. Where did you get it? Italy. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Pisa, you fool. Oh, all right, son. Hiya. Does the religious nut have gone, then? <laughs> oh, that creep, yeah. Yeah. I think I found where he's living. In the woods. You what? Just living in the woods? Yeah, there was this little old thing with the sleeping bag. It must have been this, cos there was a Bible there. Oh, he's off his head all right, isn't he? Just a little old, you say? Listen, uh, you couldn't go and sort us out a cup of coffee before we get started, son. OK. Uh, hey, Jimmy. Hi, hi. Listen, uh, you couldn't call round to the flat, could you, later? Yeah, sure, when? Give us 20 minutes, yeah? OK. All right. Oh, Max, I can't cope with this. About this time, I usually give her a bath. She'll be home tomorrow. You'll have years and years to give her a bath. Yeah, I know. After this, I... I know how much I need her. Me too. I don't know how I ever... turn my back on her. I don't have to tell you that the vows you made 20-odd years ago are still valid. Yeah, we do realise that, Father. But now Ron's relationship with this girl who had his baby, now that's all over and we're back together again. In every way. You've forgiven him? Yes, Father, but it doesn't feel right. If we could just... If we could renew our vows, then I'd feel like we were really back together again. Is it the same for you, Ron? Is this how you feel? Yes, Father. And you uh, regret what happened with this girl? Yes, Father. And this uh, relationship with this girl, that, that's completely over? Yes. Yes, it is. Father. Thank you. Yeah, so, come out. Meet me in 20 minutes. What's all this about, then? You tell me. You're the pro on the dealing. I've got a proposition for you. Well, you into drugs and all, then? Ah, not me, Jimbo. I am a robber, pure and simple. Yeah. So where do I fit in? I'm not into screwing houses or any of that crap anymore, you know. Hey, neither am I. I'm looking for a professional, someone with bottle. Do you think I want to spend the rest of my life selling pizzas? No way. I want to do a big one, something big enough to get a couple of bob behind me and take off, like retirement. And what sort of job like? Hey, never mind the job. I just want to know if you're interested. In principle, like. I don't know. Listen, I'm sick of my life, and I've been talking to a few mates who feel the same as me, and I was just wondering if you felt the same as well. It's no need to tell me right now. Just think about it. I mean, what are you doing with your life? Are you making as much cash as you want? I bet you'd like to give that lovely wife of yours a better time. Well, with the right amount of cash, you could do just that, couldn't you? So, will you think about it? Yeah. All right. I'll think about it. Good. Everything can be forgiven in the end, Ron. I'm not judging you. God certainly isn't. But I must ask about the child from this relationship. Will there be any demands on you to support him or to visit him? Bev says she doesn't want anything more to do with me. Well, you're a mother, dear. Do you have a problem with what this girl says? 
I know the girl. I think if she says she can manage on her own, she can. But I just want to forget about her father and forget about all that's happened. Then if it's what you both want, I can arrange it. How about next Wednesday? Say, uh, 3.30? Oh, that'll be great, won't it, Ron? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thanks a lot, Father. I can't believe all this is happening. All those months of being so unhappy. I never thought it could be like this again. Next on 4, Justine Shapiro joins the Reunification Express from Ho Chi Minh City to Hanoi as this week's Lonely Planet visits Vietnam, a country only just waking up to tourism. That's after the break.